all right guys so i'm back let me just double check yep everything's good i hope things are faster now just it's gonna be like five of them and here we get a string and change the title hit indexation to our app public with i call to icon.png or whatever you named it i named it that and change the title here to social a sick ng i think all right so i'll post the link uh, to this in the now I gotta get a uh, PNG. The way I'm gonna do that is by going to let's see marketing logo. Hmm. So this is the PNG I want. Favicon. Hmm. I guess what's better? Should I make it square or circular? Let's do Let's do this. Okay. All right, let's do this one. What did he do? In the description, if we go to our app public, we paste it there and we delete this uh, favorite icon thing. Uh, let's go to public index HTML and change fav ico to icon.png or whatever you named it, I name. Let's go to public index HTML and change page ico to icon.png. Oh, well. Whatever you named it, I named it that. And change the topic index HTML and change page ico to icon.png. Oh, whatever you. Let's, um, I want to change the icon here and change the name of the app. Uh, I already have the icon downloaded, but I'll post the link uh, to this in the description. So if you go to our app, public, we paste it there. So he puts in the public. So let's go to app, public, favicon. Let's name this. Let's just try this. 58 KB. Hmm. His is only four. Okay, so that's not good. You want something smaller? Let's see if we can reduce the size of the file. Twenty-four. So forty-three KB. Okay. Gonna, I'm gonna name it UP Favicon. Let's just keep a logo. UP logo. That's cool. Let's make it on puzzle. I already did that. Dude, 
shouldn't take this long. Hmm. Should we make it this? Let's just make it this. See how it looks. MVP logo. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I wonder how it will look in this. Yeah, not much of a difference. Yeah, I actually like this one better, so we're gonna keep that. Delete that. And it's 10 kilobytes smaller, 11 kilobytes smaller, so let's keep going. Then we delete this uh, favorite icon thing. Uh, let's go to public index HTML and change fav icon to icon.png, or whatever you named it, I named it that. And change the title here to social ape. Save, let's go back and everything's changed, cool. All right, so here in the source folder, there are a couple of conventions on how to group your components. I'm gonna have two folders, one that's called pages for the actual pages. We're not gonna have a lot of pages. It's gonna be like five of them. And here we're gonna have components. Source folder, okay. Folder, pages. Folder, components, components, okay. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna create three pages for now. So home.js and the pages uh, I'm gonna have with lowercase, um, with hammer case, I'm gonna, they're gonna start with a lowercase uh, letter. Okay. So basically, so I'm gonna have home.js, login.js, and sign up .js. Home login sign up. Okay. All right. So here, because uh, remember, guys, I'm using ES7 React Three. That's GraphQL React Native snippets extension. I'm just gonna. Sorry for reading the whole name. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> just gonna do RCE. Okay. Where are we now? Home. Log in. Let's go to RC tab. Tab. Nope, doesn't work. So we gotta get. What is this? Graph your React Native. So why isn't it working, bro? Perfect. And if it's extension, I'm just gonna, sorry for reading the whole name, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> just gonna do RCE. So this is a class-based component and it's already exported for us. And here I'm gonna have a header one that says home page. And let's copy the whole thing, go to login and change this to Control D. Control D and do login. And then paste here and then do Control D, Control D, login, or lowercase login. Oops, no, this is sign up, what am I doing? Sign up. Cool, save everything. Let's go to AppJS. Oops, no, this is sign up, what am I doing? Sign up. Cool, save everything. Let's go to AppJS. It's login. Oops, no, this is sign up, let me do it. Sign up. Cool, save everything. Let's go to app.js, lowercase. Hold D, control D, and do login. And let's copy the whole thing, go to login, and. Okay. Login, V, D, D, D. And change this to control D, control D, and do login. And then paste here, and then do control D, control D. Login or 
for lowercase login. Oops, no, this is sign up. What am I doing? Sign up. Cool, save everything. Let's go to app.js. That's good. And then we got. Log in, and then we gotta do sign up. Same thing. And here, uh, I I already want to install uh, React Router DOM so that we can have our different pages in different uh, routes. So I'm gonna open up a new command line, uh, a new terminal. And say, well, it's bugged. Okay, let's do npm install dash dash save react dash route. How do you do that? Terminal, new terminal, okay. One is npm start, and this one. already running where is it running bro where is it running I don't have terminal okay Done. npm install npm install save so now we are installing react router and that's gonna allow for for um, for us, it's going to allow us to do uh, routing on our front end React app. And um, let me actually put a comma here or a semicolon. So we got export default. Okay. Let's hit enter. And uh, can't have a website without the navbar, can you? All right. So here, the good old navbar. Can't have a website without the navbar, can you? Components. All right. So to RCE. What's going on with React? It's slow. Here, even though we're not going to use it yet. And here, no. Oh, can you? Alright, so, to RCE here, even though we're not going to use it yet. And here in the home, or in the app rather, let me close the index.html, the app. CSS. And here in the home, new. Yeah. React. And oh. Cool, save up. D. For reading the whole name, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I'm just gonna do RCE. So this is a class-based component, and it's already exported for us. And here I'm good. Wow. So I gotta remove this export word. Okay. I have a header one that says home page. And let's copy the whole thing. Go to login and change this to Control D, Control D, and do login. And then paste here, and then do Control D, Control D, login or log it. Bugged. Okay, let's do npm install. So let me create. All right, so it was index.html, the app CSS. Yet. 
And here in the home, or in the app rather, let me close the index HTML, the app CSS, the index CSS, you know. Let's go, come on. Don't need these. So here in the app, uh, okay, that's time installing. Let's import a couple of things from um, from React Router DOM. So we have browser, browser. Yeah. App.js. I don't want this bar here. Just change this right now. Let's just keep on. Okay, while well, that's happening, what do we do? Import browser router. We have a router, we have switch, and route. Well, my OCD is telling me to sort them alphabetically. Okay. <laughs> so these are from React Router. Go on, if I can stop. Correct. All right. Come on, dude. Why are you taking so long? So for React Router DOM to work, or for the router to work, we have to wrap everything here in a router, um, in the router uh, um, component. Actually, let me name it router, because that makes more sense. So as browser, router, as router. And here, I'm going to put our routes, but we're going to need to put the switch, not, not the JavaScript. And here, I'm going to put our routes, but we're going to need to put a switch. Not, not the JavaScript switch, but the component switch. Close this, and then put our routes here. So the first route will be the home route, and this will be to... Dude, it's still installing. <laughs> That's crazy, okay. I think this is how it is. Sorry, path equals slash. Oh. And this will have a component which we haven't brought up yet. Brought in yet? Of home. So this is the. Home 
page and then let's bring them. Let's take your pages and let's bring our pages. Sorry. Let me copy this two more times. And here, select this control D and do login and sign up. And actually, this will be exact, so it will be exactly this path. So if we add something here, it's not, it's not that path. Let me copy this. Let's paste it two more times. And this will be to slash login. The component will be login. And this will be to slash sign up. And the component will be sign Login. All right, let's save it. Everything, and let's see if this is working. So we get a homepage here, and if you type slash, we get homepage again. Slash login should give us the login page, and it does. And slash sign up gives us the sign up page. Now, obviously. want some sort of like what is this Okay. Like navigation bar here with those links, we don't want to type them here each time. So we're going to install material UI right now. So let's do npm install yes. save at material dash UI slash call. Now, uh, you can go to material, material-ui.com, they have really good documentation, and here you can go to actually get started, and it will tell you to install it, and if you want to link it with um, through HTML, no, actually this is the font, and any component you want to use, you go to component API, or component demos rather, and in this case we're going to use the app bar, which is the nav bar technically, and yeah, so you can take any of their examples, you click on show the source, and you actually get uh, the source code on how to use these uh, nav bars, but the way I'm gonna, I want to use the nav bar is different to all their implementations, so I'm actually going to do it manually right now, but there are certain things where I'm going to copy some code, so, so that I don't waste time. All right, so material wise is installed. Let's go to um, navbar, and here we need to bring it, uh, bring navbar and a couple of other things. So we're gonna have a lot of imports in our file, so I want to put some comments. No imports to that. We can navigate. So here I'm going to do MUI stuff, which is material UI. So here I'm in const, oh no, const, okay, this is ES6. Alright, so uh, import add bar, to run, uh, material, no, actually add material, material UI, slash four, slash add bar. Now we could, could actually add bar like this. Now we could actually, um, Oh my god, this takes so long. Come on. Group all our imports. 
codes like this. For example, we're going to need now something called toolbar and just do this. This would work, but this is not good uh, practice right now because we're going to need to do something called tree shaking where we import each module alone. Plus, the problem with but this is not good uh, practice right now because we're going to need to do something called tree shaking where we import each module alone. To tree shaking. Okay, cool. Plus, the problem with uh, doing stuff like this is that each time you run your app, it's importing the whole uh, framework and it's gonna make your compile time a bit slower. So, we're actually gonna do the practice they actually recommend. So, just do app bar and here slash for slash app bar. And if we were to go back to the documentation page, expand any of them, you notice that every app bar needs a toolbar inside and then you have your um, buttons inside of that. So let's go here. Oh, needs a toolbar inside and then you have your... Uh Select this, control D, and do two bar. Where's the bar actually? Is the B capital? No, it's just two bar like that. Okay. So here for our nav bar, we're gonna need to do return like this. Um, app bar. Return render. Return. Yeah, I want, I want to have it fixed at the top. Let's do position fixed. wondering how I know that there is this thing called position um, here you can just on any on any element you can just scroll down and you will see the API reference or you can go to component API um, here you can just what's going on now see the API reference or you can go to component API and pick your component and if we go to app bar here it will show us that these are all the properties that this component can take and the values that they take so I'm using right now position and uh, these are the values you can have and actually the default value is fixed so I shouldn't even type that all right I learned something right now so I should just leave it like this because that's the default Full value so let's do toolbar and here uh, I'm going to actually there's nothing right now I'm just gonna do it like that and I want to put some buttons inside and for this I'm gonna bring in button from material UI. And it's not actually 100 kilobytes, this uh, import cost uh, extension sometimes doesn't calculate the size properly. Okay, so here we'll say button, and this has a property color. Um, I'm, gonna in, I'm gonna give it inherit. And, and button. Actually, can take some. This is this is a uh, can be a higher order component, and you, you can pass it a component, a different component, and then pass it the prop and take some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it inherit, and 
a button actually can take some. This is this is a uh, can be a higher order component, and you, you can pass it a component, a different component, and then pass it the properties of those components. So what I'm talking about, you can right now just say button, and uh, say to, what is this, this is login, and then let's paste this two more times, and then say home, say to, what is this, this, and then you will have that component as a child. So what I'm talking about, you can right now just say button, and uh, say to, what is this, this is login, and then let's paste this two, and just say button, and uh, say to, what is this, this, and then you will have that component as a child. So what, and you, you can, and, and but, um, I'm going to do, in, I'm going to give it inherit, and, and button actually can take some. This is this is a uh, can be a higher order component, and you, you can pass it a component, a different component, and then pass it the properties of those components, and then you will have that component as a child. So what I'm talking about, you can write a component. A different, and button actually can take some. This is this is a uh, can be a higher order component, and you. you Pass it a component, a different component, and then pass it the properties of those components. And then you, this is this is a uh, can be a higher order component, and you, you can pass it a component, a different component, and then pass it the properties of those components, and then you will have that component as a child. So what I'm talking about, you can right now just say button, and uh, say to what is this? This is login, and then let's paste this two more times, and then say home, and then this will be sign up. Safe. Let's go to our app. Now, what we want in our application, and then this will be sign up. And let's save. Let's go to our app. Now, what we want in our application is that we want the navbar to be at the top, and then the navbar never changes. It's only the content of the page that changes. So this navbar right here is not content. The nav will be sign up. And let's save. Let's go to our app. Now, what we want in our application is that we want the navbar to be at the top, and, and let's save. Let's go to our app. Now, what we want in our application is that we want the navbar to be at the top, and then the navbar never changes. It's only the content of the page that changes. So this navbar right here is not going to go inside the switch. It's going to be outside. Of course, it's still going to be in the router. That's going to be right here. So let's say navbar. Let's actually bring it in. Say components, and let's do import navbar from components slash navbar. Let's save from component, and let's do import navbar. Actually, bring it in. Say components out there. That's going to be right here. Page that changes. So this navbar right here is not going to go inside the switch. It's going to be outside. And then, and let's save. Let's go to our app. Now, what we want in our application is that we want the navbar to be at the top, and then the navbar never changes. It's only the content of the page that changes. So this navbar right here is not going to go. Now it's not go inside the switch. It's going to be outside. Of course, it's still going to be in the router, but it's going to be right here. So let's say navbar. And let's actually bring it in. Say components. And let's do import navbar from components. Okay. Bring it in. 
components and as we import navba from components slash navba save let's go to our app and there we go we have our nav we have our buttons but the text is gone because it's actually behind the navbar. So let's give our let's make this section that's got the text a container, like a bootstrap container. If you've used that before, so let's go in the actually I'm gonna go to the global CSS file app.css, CSS. Let's do dot container this class, and I wanna give it so I wanna give the container margin top so that uh, the top content does. And hide behind the navbar, so. Actually, just do margin, and then here let's say so the way margin works. You can you can give four numbers. You can give one, or which applies to all. You can give two values, which apply to the top and bottom, and then left and right. And then you can give four. So the first one will be top, and then goes clockwise, right, bottom, and then left. So here I'm gonna do 80 for top, not 20, 80. And then for um, for right I'm gonna give it auto. For bottom I'm gonna give it zero, and then for left I'm gonna give it auto, so that it it actually stays in the middle by giving it auto. I'm gonna give it a max width of 1200 pixels, so that it's actually kind of pushed to the middle. All right, so let's save that. But we need to give this class something. What do I surround it? Do I surround? I think I'm going to surround the whole thing. So let's copy the, uh, cut that and then do dot container and then put our stuff here. Let's look here. All right, cool. Actually, the navbar shouldn't be in the container. So the navbar should be outside. Like this. All right. Uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything. So fit. All right, cool. Actually, the navbar shouldn't be in the container. So the navbar should be outside. Like this. All right, uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything, so. Let's go to the navbar here. Like I said earlier, we can pass it a component, and here we need the uh, the link component from we. router dash dom and here we're using tree shaking as well so we're importing only that component so here let's take the link let's do let's write in all of these fields and let's do component equals link and here we can actually pass the properties of the component link and it will be under the button so in, in a way it's like actually putting it here but it looks cleaner so here let's do so the link needs a two property and for login it's going to be two slash login for home it's going to be two slash to just slash <laughs> and for sign up it's going to be two uh, slash sign up so we save, and we go to our app, and there we go. So if we click on our button. It actually takes us to those pages. Cool. Let's bring these buttons to the middle. Um, how do we, let's give this toolbar a class name of uh, nav-container. And let's go to our CS, uh, CSS, app CSS, and do nav-container. Uh, and we're just going to have margin auto. Let's save, save everything. Let's go, and there we go, our buttons are in the middle. Cool. Damn, okay. Let me just finish this part off. So I've been just watching the videos, not really doing anything, but let me figure that out. So 
the fluently actually, actually I'm gonna go it's got the text a container, like a bootstrap container if you've used that before. So the fluently actually, actually I'm gonna go to the global CSS file, app.css. App.css Let's do dot container, this class. And I want to give it, so I want to give the container margin top so that uh, the top content doesn't hide behind the navbar. So I should just do margin. And then here, let's say, so the way margin works, you're gonna, you can give four uh, numbers. You can give one, or which applies to all. You can give two values, which is like the top and bottom and then left and right. And then you can give four. So the first one will be top and then goes clockwise, the right, bottom, and then left. So here I'm gonna do 80 for top, not 20, 80. And, and then for um, for right, I'm gonna give it auto. For bottom, I'm gonna give it zero. And then for left, I'm gonna give it auto. So. It, it actually stays in the middle by giving it auto. I'm gonna give it a max width of 1200 pixels so that it's actually kind of pushed to the middle. Alright, so let's save that. But we need to give this class to so that it's actually kind of pushed to the middle. Alright, so let's save that. But we need to give this class to something. Or do I surround it? Do I surround? I think I'm gonna surround the whole thing. So let's copy the. Uh, and then do dot container and then put our stuff here let's look here Actually, the navbar shouldn't be in the container. So the navbar should be outside. Why is that? Nobody knows. This. Alright. Uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything. So. Let's go to the navbar here. Like I said earlier, we can pass it a component. And here we need the, uh, the link component from React Router DOM. The import link from React Router. Uh, the link can pop so let's go to the navbar here all right uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything so let's go to the navbar here like i said earlier we can pass it a component and here we need the uh, the link component from react router dom the import link from react dash router dash dom and here we're using tree shaking as well so we're importing only that. okay that component all right uh, but our buttons right now don't do anything so let's go to the navbar Shaking as well. Also, we're importing only that component. So here, let's take the link. Let's do. Let's write in all of these fields and let's do component equals link. And here we can actually pass the properties of the component link. And it will be under the button. So in, in a way, it's like actually putting it here, but it looks cleaner. So here, let's do, so the link needs a two property, and for login, it's gonna be two slash login. For home, it's gonna be two slash, to just slash. And for sign up, it's gonna be two uh, slash sign up. So we save, and then we go to our app, and there we go. So if we click on our buttons, it actually takes us. So we see. 
I don't know why Prettify doesn't work for me. Maybe I'll pay someone on file on up for five bucks to help me debug that. Save and we go to our app. And there we go. So we click on our buttons, it actually takes us to those pages. Cool. Let's bring these buttons to the middle. Okay. It's not working. <laughs> What's going on? the problem bro there we go cool cool let's bring these buttons to the middle um how do we, let's give this toolbar a class name of uh, not dash container CS, uh, CSS, not CSS. Do not dash uh, container. And we're just going to have margin auto. Let's save, save it. Everything. Let's go. And there we go. Our buttons are in the middle. What? Why is that looking so weird, bro? Toolbar. Home. Nav bar. Toolbar. Name. Don't make that classic mistake. Cool. All right. Of, uh, of not a container, and we're just gonna have margin auto. That's All right, guys. So let's go. And there we go. Our buttons are in the middle. Cool. All right, right guys. So, so yeah, we did about 20, 30 minutes of this video, which is not bad. Actually, uh, we did about 15 minutes. That's totally fine. Um, but yeah, I got to add the home. This I got to add this right. And um, so I'm gonna change up the color of this. I'm gonna figure out how to do that off stream, and then in the next stream, I'll continue following this tutorial. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next stream. Take care and have a good day.